Hello, friends and my church family. My name is Vivian Baker, and I would just love to welcome you to our daily devotion and, and just let you know what a blessing it is for, for us when we have this opportunity to come before you and share with you. So before we begin, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we just come before you and we ask you, we ask you, Lord, that uh, you would make your presence known to us, that we would feel the working of the Holy Spirit as you're working in our hearts, guiding, leading, driving us on, Father, as we strive to become those men and women that you have called us to be. So we thank you for this opportunity and we praise you. We give you all the glory, the honor, and praise. We pray this in your most precious name. Amen. Psalm 55, verses 4 through 6. This psalm is what is called a contemplation of David. And I'd like to read those three verses to you. My heart is severely pained within me, and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling have come upon me. So I, David, said, Oh, that I had the wings of a dove, I would fly away and be at rest. Have you ever felt that way? I know in my many years on this earth, I have felt that way many times. And I'm sure that most of you, if not all of you, have felt the same way at one time or another. And we know that Jesus forewarned us or prepared us for such things that may come our way. And in John chapter 16, verse 33, Jesus himself said, I have told you these things so that you may have peace, because in the world you will have tribulations. But take heart, because I have overcome the world. What precious reassurance and comfort that we receive from, from Jesus himself, especially in those times that we are struggling. To me, when I read a verse like this, it says, this is what I hear Jesus saying. I hear him saying to each one of us individually, I've climbed that mountain for you. I've walked that path with you, and I have overcome for you in my name. As I said, what a precious Savior that he would do all of this just for us to make our journey on our way to heaven as gentle as it could possibly be. But even though, even though we know this and we believe this, still sometimes we're, we're, we feel like we're uh, taken aback because of things that bombard our lives, those trials and tribulations that oftentimes seem to come out of nowhere, seem to just come our way. And so we, we even go as far sometimes to ask God, Lord, why are you allowing this to happen for me? We forget, even though we know better and we're taught that, we forget that sometimes God allows bad things in our lives in order for him to bring um, good in our, in our life. That is his good. Scripture confirms that, and one of the verses that clearly states that comes from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 16, which tells us that he might humble you and that he might test you to do you good in the end. What a blessed Savior we have. He thinks of every angle from every direction. Yes, God has our best interest at heart. He loves us so deeply, so unconditionally. And when we have that urge like David, and we will, if you haven't already, you we will because God says we will. We have that urge to fly away and rest just like David did because of trials and struggles. It's so simple, my friends. Just do it. Just do it. Jesus himself invites us 
um, just as he did with the disciples. If, if you look at um, Mark chapter 6, verse 31, Jesus said, Come away with me. Let us go alone to a quiet place and rest for a while. That's a personal invitation from Jesus himself. God wants us to rest, just as he himself did. Um, on that seventh day, he rested. And how many times have we read, especially in the Gospels, of, of the many times that Jesus stowed away by himself to be at rest, to be in prayer, and to be alone with the Heavenly Father. And while we are resting, he wants us to know and to believe and trust in him during those times. Trust that he and only he is in complete control over us, over our lives. The world is not going to stop when we take a break. You know, by the way, we know that beautiful uh, worship song, if his eye is on the sparrow, his eye certainly is on us as well. In case you haven't noticed, everything will still be there tomorrow. No one's going to take it away. It'll, it'll just be waiting for us to pick up and continue. So as I close, I'd like to close with some words of encouragement. I have one group in particular that I, I really want to direct this to, all of us, but specifically also to them. And these are our young moms that we have right here in our fellowship. Those of you who expect to have that, that perfect home, everything in, in complete order and organized 24-7, I'd like to share with you something that I learned myself from experience many, many years ago. Striving for that, ladies, is like shoveling snow in a blizzard. So think about that. There's nothing that's more wonderful even in all the business, busyness of our days. Moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, whoever we are, the importance of taking that time, being alone and being at rest with our Lord. We pray this in his most precious name. Father, we just come before you and we thank you, Lord, that you offer all these opportunities. And in the busyness of our days where we tend to, to be scurrying about back and forth, trying to do all the things that need to be done, sadly, we forget about you. And you call us to come rest with you, come alone and be with you and take that time to be together. So we thank you for this encouragement, Father, and we pray that um, we would uh, be so encouraged by it that we would live our, our lives daily, being with you, taking time. We praise you, Father. We thank you. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. In your name we pray. Amen. Goodbye, my friends, and God bless. Thank you.